I'm Jim Collison and live from our virtual studios around the world, or at least here in the state of Nebraska. This is Gallup's Theme Thursday, Season 6, recorded on August 13th, 2020. Theme Thursday is a Gallup webcast series that dives deep into the Clifton Strengths themes, one theme at a time. This season, based on developing teams and managers with Clifton Strengths, and today's theme is input. If you're listening live, love to have you join us in our chat room. That link is actually right above me on our live page. It'll take you to a YouTube instance. Join the chat room there. Let us know where you're listening from as well. That's kind of the tradition. If you have questions after the fact, you can always send us an email, coaching at gallup.com. Don't forget, subscribe to us on, on your favorite podcast app, whatever that might be. Just search Gallup Webcast. You can find Theme Thursday there. And hit the subscribe button on YouTube there so you'll subscribe to whenever we publish something new. You'll get an update. Micah Librant is our host today. She's a workplace consultant with me here at Gallup. Micah, always great to see you on th Theme Thursday. Welcome back. Thank you. Gosh, it's great to be here. How fun is it that you get to say, at least in Nebraska? I well, know. maybe we can remember this as one of the many seasons in which I moved in the middle of it. <laughs> So I'm excited to be here today. Of course, this season, we are going domain by domain, and we are getting through those strategic thinking themes. Today, we've got two strategic thinking themes, if you're listening live, um, and they're both a little bit similar. So you'll, you'll notice some of the sim similarities. I, As I've been going domain by domain and really marinating in that leadership domain, I have noticed a lot of the similarities between these themes, but also a lot of the differences. And anytime you are working with teams, which is really what we're focusing on this this season, I think the best question you can ask is not just, do we think, do we execute, do we influence, but how? What is our unique flavor of how the people on our team who lead with some of these themes really get uh, meet the challenges that they have before them? So today within the strategic thinking leadership domain, we're talking about the theme of input. And I hope by the time that we're done, you'll be able to think about how input contributes to the five truths of strong teams. These five truths are what we're going to use to really unpack how input can contribute to the strength of your team. So let's start with the short definition. If you are looking at your Clifton Strengths 34 report and you have high input, here are the two sentences that you'll find to define that. You have a need to collect and archive. You may accumulate information, ideas, artifacts, or even relationships. And the first truth of strong teams that we'll be using to talk about the how of input is how great or strong teams um, address conflict. It's that conflict doesn't destroy strong teams because strong teams focus on results. And thank goodness, like in a year like this with a lot of conflict, mm -hmm. I'm sure it has brought it to teams. Input, when we think about it, this 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 idea of, of collecting, archiving, doesn't necessarily feel like it has results. So how does uh, someone with high input focus on results? Yeah. So I think about in times of conflict, input is likely to do one of two things, maybe both, but you can think about them conceptually as two different things. First, they'll offer information that they've gathered that further the conversation. Or second, they'll uh, tap into that sort of search and discover mode that they have. So they think about gathering evidence, gathering information, gathering opinions and indicators that expand your team's thinking in order to get past that conflict and into results. A focus on results specifically might be how much they can collect. So improving against our previous results means for somebody with input, not just that they're performing better, but that they know more, they've heard more, or they've exposed their understanding to more ideas and more angles than they had in the past. And then how do they track their progress? Because I think you, know, you mentioned we collect it, but where, where's that progress being tracked? I think about input as collecting clues to progress. So input is is a lot like just an open vessel ready to be filled with information and indicators. When it comes to progress, someone with dominant input is probably looking for how progress opens your team up in different ways. So they may see the progress in and of itself as something to collect and archive. It's another clue, another way of understanding their world. Input doesn't necessarily have a timeline to it, unlike some of our other strategic thinking themes, or unlike I think some of the more directly linked to progress themes that you'll find in that executing ca category. It's not so much about comparing to the past 
or launching into the future. The best way to help someone with input focus on progress is to see progress as the work it takes to create that next blank page or to to get that next gig of memory. How does our team's progress lead us to new opportunities that where we can collect, where we can discover, where we can understand what we would have missed if we had remained the same? Yeah, and, and even in teams, collecting that information for the benefit of the team and tracking its benefit, yes, I think it's yeah. super important, right? In a in a world where we live today where that's getting easier and easier to be able to do that in, in kind of automated reporting, I think that's an inputs person's dream, right? To be able to show that impact. I think so. And also I think about, you know, Jim, your comment about being able to to digitize things and, and have greater access to things that you can collect, whether that's information or relationships, like it says in the definition, or even just artifacts. Input, I think, might think about future progress as one of the reasons that they're collecting things today. So um, I often talk to people with high input who tell me, yeah, this might have use in the future. Or you think about how it contributes to a strong team. They're remaining open to information that might be important to their team in the future and finding more organized or, or better, more efficient ways to capture and archive more of that information. Gosh, that's, that's certainly a, a place that you want to position the person on your team with input to lead. And I think it's that reminder that these things are successful talents, right? In other words, that we're collecting things for a reason to help, yeah. to improve, to increase velocity, not just keep, right? And so it's a great, right. in that tracking, I think it's a great opportunity to show that's value. Okay, let's increased look at- Increased uh, velocity, that was cool. Sounds pretty interesting. Though. <laughs> let's, look at, uh, let's look at truth number two. Number two, strong teams prioritize what's best for the organization and then move forward. We often talk about the me versus we and input seems like a very much a me exercise, but how does someone with input focus on a larger goal rather than just the me and maybe more towards the we? I think input by itself is a very outward focused theme because it's it's about being naturally attracted to ideas that happen not within their own brain, but outside of their own brain. Um, they'll do this first by thinking. They're not just going to feel when they when they don't know something like like some of the more emotional relationship building themes they'll quickly consider goals and ideas beyond their own by studying goals and ideas larger than their own. So it's common to find themes that especially intrigue people with high input. Maybe they're especially attracted to learning about a particular subject or a certain industry. And within that, they open up the intellectual floodgates and gather as much as they can and more. So to tap into this in a way that helps your teams serve a greater good, remember this, this truth really is about not just where your mindset is, but the action you actually take. You could ask some Someone with input to explore what they've archived in the past that might contribute to the organization's current goals or a current challenge that the team or organization is facing. Don't forget, input is both the hunter-gatherer and the curator of what's been cultivated. Yeah, and that curation, how, how does that inspire them to take action then? Can you explain that a little bit more? I think the first and maybe the most energetic step for someone with input is likely that gathering place, that that place of I can go out and find out what's already been said or what's already been done, or I can, you know, find artifacts that give me clues to how to better make sense of my surroundings, to look, ask, research, study, or otherwise gain existing discoveries that they don't yet own. Um, if you give them the time or the chance to be the one doing the collecting before you ask them to act, then they're able to act really quickly and navigate what they've found in order to sort to what's most most relevant regarding the challenge at hand. I think you'll see somebody with input take action in a more traditional sense, meaning they're ready to roll up their sleeves and do some work when they feel well informed um, or when they feel like that space in their brain that is just constantly dripping out the bottom <laughs> has been filled with more information, um, at least when they've had a chance to just sort of roll around in the information that's at hand. Usually um, it's better if they get to do some of that fact finding themselves. I find when I coach people with high input, it's not enough just to have a team of researchers or fact checkers go do the gathering for them, but they really find their flow when they can have their hands I have this image of like actually touching the the files in a library card of <laughs> what was that the Dewey Decimal System where yeah, you can go yeah. through the actual library cards. Um, that probably won't happen to a lot of people, but if you think about how can you, you know, flip through those uh, 
how can you flip through the library cards yourself intellectually mm -hmm. uh, for somebody with high input? Um, really, it's not just because it feeds them. It's also because they're doing it over and over again in a way that they are going to bring angles to the search or sources that they know are really uh, fruitful that if you just sent out a team without input, they might other they might miss it. And very, very valuable to a team mm -hmm. uh, under the, in those circumstances. Let's look at truth number three. Thank you, Lisa. Card catalog. That was escaping <laughs> my uh, my communication, but that's definitely the what it is. the chat room to the be helpful. The thing, the yeah. file, yeah. Card somebody catalog. with input, by the way, who probably... <laughs> somebody maybe it yeah. was like somebody with inputs dream yes. um, members of strong teams truth number three are committed to their personal lives as much as they are to their work and what does input look like in somebody's personal life you know, our original definition of input, if you go years back, um, it mentioned collecting and archiving physical things. I think we even talked about like bug or stamp collections or baseball cards. And this might be true for someone with input. But remember, it's it's really about success. And I'm not sure for a, most uh, bug collectors that that is what launched them into their success. Um, this Physical manifestation, however, of the mental ability to gather really probably shows up as someone in, in their personal life who collects things, especially someone who collects things because they might one day have use for themselves or for other people. Um, they keep things for future utility. That might also mean that they're the person on your team or in your family or in your community who can find that article that they archived decades ago. Uh, they might be the first person to ask, hey, are we getting copies of the slides? <laughs> Not necessarily because they want it today, but because they know that it might serve them or others tomorrow. You might also notice that they have go-to ways to absorb. Uh, maybe they're members of monthly subscription services or book clubs or art groups. Um, maybe they're you know just part of circles of people who gather information, relationships, uh, even even physical things. But what it is is that they're drawn to experiences that build their collateral. What kind of questions, and we've been asking this throughout the year, what kind of questions could a manager use to kind of tap into this on a personal side? What is inspiring you lately? What are you reading? What are your favorite podcasts? Uh, if you want to sign up for Gallup you can Podcast, collect podcasts, you Gallup get has, a uh, podcatcher. <laughs> um, has a lot of them. What do you love to collect? Uh, what topics interest you most lately? Um, and who are your biggest influencers? Mm, I like that question a lot. Uh, let's look at truth number four. Number four is strong teams embrace diversity. Having a team composed of people who are all looking at issues from the same angle does not a strong team make. Yeah. <laughs> so we're not using Clifton Strengths to mask uh, or to solve the entire diversity issue, but we are using this to say, what do we know somebody with input brings to the team that other people without input simply do not? And we have a diversity of terms that we can use. What are some of those terms, Micah, that we might use for input? Sure. The person on your team with input might be called the librarian who would remember the term card catalog, <laughs> the collector, the curator, an organizer, gatherer, archivist. Um, they have an appetite for knowing um, and insatiably curious. And, and what is that unique perspective that input brings for a team specifically? You know, my favorite way to understand input is to in, look at input in the context of creativity. Somebody with input can can bring an idea to the table that the team would not otherwise have. But the difference between input and, say, ideation is for somebody with input, that idea is coming from outside. So they're bringing and gathering other perspectives into the team. Uh, rather than creating new takes on a current challenge from their own brain, they can offer different perspectives by collecting them from what already exists outside. And I think that leads to a, almost a kind of a grounded relevance. Like they've got these roots that reach outside of the team into other places and an awareness of what's being said, what's being gathered, what's available. Uh, they challenge their team to to consider more sources. Uh, they know that there is always more to understand outside of their own perspective and outside of their own team. They stretch the thinking of the team really beyond 
its own limitations. And this might show up in collecting specific tangible artifacts, but it might also just be about that mindset of making sense of something by starting with gathering what already exists around you. I also think during this time of uh, dispersed work environments, right, where a lot of people were, you know, were uh, sent home or a different work environment, it created chaos in teams of where do we find things now? And those folks that, uh, who had input on the team were co- have been collecting them all along. <laughs> and so Even if we weren't supposed to save them on our own hard drive, <laughs> somebody right. with input probably did. <laughs> somebody, somebody, somebody cataloged those. Somebody put those somewhere. And so the value on that team is, hey, okay, new new environment. I'm home. How do I get to that stuff? I've I've actually had that problem myself, where I have had to redo all of a lot of my systems, and I've had to ask those folks. Where are we keeping all this stuff again? I know it's there, but where are we keeping it? So very, very valuable. Let's look at truth number five. Number five, strong teams are magnets for talent. Another way to spot a strong team is to look for the teams everyone wants to be on. And what will specifically attract people to teams for that? No. Input can be great listeners because they're always trying to capture as much content as possible. They're also excellent supportive partners because they tend to always have something tucked away that you're looking for. Just like you mentioned, Jim, of, hey, where do we keep this now? Chances are somebody with input either has gathered it themselves or they've paid attention to the pathways that they need in order to get what they're looking for. So even if you perhaps discarded it at face value because it wasn't helpful in the moment, look to somebody with input. Chances are they can help you retrace those breadcrumbs. Yeah. And you say pathways. I also like the word patterns, collecting those patterns. Well, how has it been done in the past? Where was it? Where could it have been in the past? Where might have we done this? Right. So I like that. How might you describe the gift that input brings to a team? Openness to information and ideas paired with the ability to sort and file in their mind what's most relevant right now and what might have a future use. Um, I think, to, to put it pretty simply, someone with input deepens your team's well of resources. Let's review those five, Micah. I'm so glad that we've done these five because I was leading a leadership team session a week ago, two weeks ago, and somebody asked me, hey, does, um, you know, what's the makeup of of the best team? Because they're looking at their own team grid across the four domains. And I said, I was able to rattle them off. And that's rare for me. Typically, anytime I try to remember a list of any number, I forget one. Um, But because we've done this so many times, it was so worth it. So I hope it's having that same effect for you because the truth of it is strong teams are not unified by their makeup of strengths. They're unified by other things they've got going for them. And here's those five things. Results, not conflict. Do what's best for the organization and then move forward. Work and personal lives are equally important. They embrace diversity and they are magnets for talent. Yeah, we can almost spend, oh, we have spent a whole season talking about that. So that's <laughs> that's pretty great. We've also been uh, doing these talent mindfulness exercises, been very, very popular And so, Micah, you have another one ready for us. What do you have today? Yeah, you know, this is a practice that underscores the importance of self-reflection. Talent mindfulness reminds us that strengths development isn't a one-time challenge. Um, It's not even a 30-day challenge. It's about ongoing curiosity, studying what goes right, opening up yourself and those around you to the possibility that there is infinitely more to gain from understanding what's clicking in the moments that it's clicking than there is fixing those moments when we're coming up short. So today's exercise seems simple and you might notice more silence than you're used to. I want you to sit with that silence and allow your mind to go wherever it needs to go. Um, One of the tenets of mindfulness outside of our practice is non-judgment. So please know that whatever thoughts you have are just that, they're thoughts, um, that they're not right or wrong, and that they're not your final draft. Um, Allow yourself to sit in in a little bit of this reflection moment. It'll be short, three to five minutes, um, and it'll be worth it. So let's do something because this is different than what we've just run through of unpacking input. Um, Let's do something to create some space between where we've been and where we're going with this practice. Imagine your intentional breath creating a bubble around this reflection, offering just a little bit of insulation uh, for this self-reflection. So sit up tall as if there was just a breath of space between each of your vertebrae. 
and at your own pace while I'm quiet, take three deep breaths all the way in and all the way out. Here we are in a space of self-reflection. What have you done today that was good? What are you proud of? Since you woke up this morning, how many things can you name that were great? We're not looking for monumental. Probably nothing anyone outside of your own brain would even notice. If you exercised, what were some good moments of your performance? If you made a meal, what was a micro win as you executed that task? If you let yourself sleep in and rest or offered something to someone else, what was good in those exchanges? I'll give you a moment. I'll be silent and I invite you in your mind or on paper if you like to list as many things as you can that you have done well today. Now let's narrow a bit. What are three things you're proud of today out of all of those you were just able to name? Maybe three is narrowing, maybe three is expanding based on where your brain went, but I invite you to meet me at three. Three things that you're proud of today. How did your own talents or strengths show up in these three micro victories? How soon can you plan to do these things again? So often we think excellence has to be loud or momentous. But in this practice, we're building your reflection skill, your ability to notice, to actively receive and capture those positive interactions throughout your day. Usually when we think about strengths-based interventions, they're not drastic, at least not to anyone but the person doing them. They're made of small changes in the way we approach our challenge that are more in tune to our natural rhythms of thought and feeling and behavior. And if we're going to actively learn about what these are, you have to practice putting our ear to the ground during moments of success. I should be able to ask you to do this hourly, to to ask you to name at least three great aspects of your performance every hour on the hour. For now, just focus again on the three things you've done well today. And in honor of these three, I invite you to seal this practice with three more slow, deep breaths. And that's your talent mindfulness for today. You must have been reading my mind because I, I've been uh, since since March been really focusing on the idea of these micro moments and how much they matter. You know, on a flight from L.A. to New York, an aircraft will make some 10,000 course corrections on autopilot during its time before it gets there. Right. Instead of one big major one. Just before uh, nine days ago, I went out in the yard and planted a few grass seeds, like I had some bare spots. And little tiny spots took me about five minutes. I came back when I came back from um, from vacation this last weekend. They'd grown, 
like little tiny spots filled in those places in a, in a, it's these moments, right? It's these little moments where you don't, I didn't seed the whole lawn. I didn't write. I just filled in a few spots when I came back and I'd actually kind of forgot. That's the kind of the best part, right? Mm -hmm. You kind of forget. And you're like, Oh, Oh, that's right. I did that. And there the grass was growing, just filling in those spots in, and I think in our in our strengths journey, oftentimes it's the little it's the little things that matter. It's the little moments of using those strengths in those times, using the, for success. Right? I just God, I just love this. This is such a great one, Micah. Thanks for thanks. You said it was going to be good. <laughs> I, I, I never doubt <laughs> the you. Next but one's uh, good that too. that one is good. I think these these little moments matter. And I could tell over the last two weeks, I've been really busy, haven't been able to get outside, and I could tell in, in the landscaping, I hadn't been out there because for the last four or five weeks, I've gone out and done a little bit every day. Instead of these big moments, I just go out and do a little bit every day. Mm -hmm. And uh, man, I could tell I was, I was, I'd stopped doing it and I could tell. And I was like, wow, that's interesting how just in a two weeks that can kind of get out of hand. So a, a great reminder. Speaking of reminders with that, uh, we'll remind everyone to take full advantages of all the resources we have available now in Gallup Access. Head out to gallup.com slash Clifton Strengths. Really the I think the best way to log in takes you right to your strengths dashboard inside of Access. Log down. You can access all your reports that way. Um available gallup.com slash Clifton Strengths. Try it out today. If you want to uh, follow us in any way, of course, you can subscribe here on uh, YouTube if you're watching us there. And the if you're listening to us as a podcast, maybe you already have, but share this with a friend. You know, we we almost never say that, but have you shared the podcast yet? Maybe you have it, maybe that's the micro change that you can make today is take a moment, find a friend who has input, share it with them. Whether they've taken the assessment or not, it'll speak to them. And so a great opportunity to get that done as well. If you have questions, you can send us an email, coaching at gallop.com. And then don't forget, join us in our Facebook group, facebook.com slash group slash called to coach. Lots of great resources for you out there. As well, if you want to do it on LinkedIn, you can uh, you can just search Clifton Strengths Train Coaches, and that'll get us there. Micah, we never talk about Instagram, but it's getting more and more popular. How do they follow you on Instagram? Follow me at Strengths Talk. Uh, you'll see this season we've been doing something called Compliments from Your Team, where we look at every single theme during the week that we do our live show and offer just a short, succinct compliment that somebody could give you for having that team. Or having and that theme on your team. <laughs> and Riley's doing a bang up job of the new Clifton Strengths on Instagram as well. So you can follow that. I want to thank you for joining us uh, uh, today. If you're listening live, stay around for the mid show. With that, we'll say goodbye, everybody.